Hey what's up guys, it is Psycure Sam here and welcome back to the channel and today I'm really excited to bring you guys a brand new commentary video where we're going to be talking about Unity versus Unreal first impressions. And before we get started guys, I just want to take my time and thank you so much for all the support on my Twitter account. Since a lot of people have started to like my tweets and follow my Twitter account and speaking of which, if you haven't already, you can do it by clicking the link in the description down below, I'll link my Twitter account there, uh, where I share some news about, about the channel, share some uh, pre video excitement or hype and um, no but really like I want to thank you so much for all the support it really makes my day when I see that a lot of people are liking the tweets and and responding with their own tweets and retweets and comments etc and last but not least I just want to also mention that these topics that I will be talking in this video there these are mostly going to be my opinions and thoughts of unity and unreal so if you dislike these kind of videos this might not be the one for you but I still challenge you to watch it if you want to get my insight on on how I actually got the first impressions when I started with both of these engines. And with that being said guys, let's get right into the video. So first and foremost, we're gonna start off by talking about Unity first impressions. The absolute first thing that I got to see when I got started with Unity was how easy it was actually to learn it. And I just wanna mention, like when I got started with Unity, I was like 12 or 11 years old, I think, and I didn't have my programming skills, I didn't know how to level design, I sucked at it. <laughs> I was really raw and new to the game industry, and I didn't even know that it was an industry right I was just like getting into it because I thought that it would be cool to make some games and learn programming and all that and this was me 12 years old or 11 and I didn't have my programming I didn't have my level designing neither did I have English skills and I barely like understood the basic words like camera game object you know scene scene was a very difficult word for me at that time I was like what do you mean by creating a new scene I was watching tutorials and I was like what do you mean <laughs> and despite all that I was still able to get into unity and really find it easy to actually work on because after clicking a button like twice I was like alright so logically thinking clicking on 3d is gonna create a 3d game object that's literally it and that's mainly because of how straightforward the UI of unity was and still is speaking of which I really did I feel like I really did underestimate the power of unity because of its simple layout like when I was getting started I was like alright so this is obviously beginner friendly and that's pretty much it. Like, you're not gonna be able to use it so much further than actually being a beginner. Like, when you get to professional level, you're probably gonna find a new game engine. But oh boy, was I wrong, <laughs> because now I sit here years after still using Unity for my daily work. <laughs> and a part of that also goes for graphically, like, I was just unsure at first, but then I kind of learned how to do everything by myself, because Unity really is a engine that really, like, meets you with a simple layout, meets you with a simple UI, and is like, alright, so here you go, all the resources for you to create everything. When you're new, you probably are just sitting there and like, alright, the graphics aren't really that good, and I'm not really sure how to make them better, I guess this is like the graphics in Unity, and that's why most people do say like, oh, Unity's graphics are shitty, they're not shitty, they're just, they just give you all the resources to work on, but if you don't have the knowledge, if you don't have the talent, obviously they're gonna look shitty. So in one way, I would say that Unity is teaching you to become independent too. However, I really couldn't have thought that the level designing could become any easier than that. Like literally, it was just so fun to get started with Unity, get into a new scene, like dropping your trees, drop a few textures for the ground, drop in a few vegetation like bushes and grass, and just start doodling. Like you literally, it, it felt like you were just drawing in 3D and it felt amazing because it was so simple to learn the pattern and get into Unity multiple times and be like, ah, that was what I was supposed to do. And this really connects to the first thought as well, like the UI simplicity, how simple it is for you to get into it and get started with something. And this really connects to what we spoke earlier in the video as well. The fact that I underestimated the power of Unity because of a simple layout. Like when I was drawing in drawing in 3D, that's what I'm calling, but when, when I was actually making a level design in Unity and when I was new and making the level design, I just thought that it was more fun than actually professional looking and I didn't think of it too much because it was a free engine I got some free assets and I got to draw in 3d it, it was incredibly fun and that's a fun way of learning as well like it 
obviously when you're getting to getting into game development you know that it's a little bit serious as well not even a little bit but a lot because you're gonna have to learn quite a bit of stuff but when you get met up with a simple ui that looks playful when you get into level design it's quite fun to actually work on and it becomes easier for you to learn as well and the almighty as a store <laughs> i mean it's just incredible like even then back then it was incredible and right now it's even more incredible because the asset store really is a place that a lot of people are contributing with their own stuff 3d models scripts and etc and unity is so viable it's so editable like you can edit it so much that you can actually release your own editor tools and it's incredible because if unity is missing something you know that you're going to be able to find it on the asset store i also realized that unity has a asset store which is very viable with prices like they they have content ranging from cheap to expensive i mean from popularity to less popularity and they got content for literally everyone and that's i think that's primarily because unity in itself is a generally a game engine which everyone can use as well that a lot of people are creating assets for it because they know that a lot of people are gonna find the assets and pay the money or get them for free and grow the names of those authors. And it's also because it's so simple to use. For example, the asset store is filled with animations. Speaking of which, animating in Unity is incredibly simple. And level designing is also very simple. So a lot of people do have 3D models, you know, terrain packs, etc., terrain textures, literally whatever you're searching for. Speaking of which, animations. I wanna also get into how easy it actually is to animate right in the scene window and preview real time and oh my gosh does it feel amazing because you literally click on window then you click on animation create a new animation by clicking a create a new animation button and then you get started you have keyframes and then you can just edit all these models that you're wanting to animate like if you say you have a rigged 3d character you don't have to open a brand new window to just animate the character and then save it as a you know a brand new keyframe or whatever you just have a animation file brand new keyframes on a simple window and then you have your scene window to edit all these joints and all these rigs and it looks amazing not only that but it also feels very easy to use you click the record button then you start animating your character in the scene window which is where you manually edit all your models and you know increase them in size and place them and then you just click the record button again when you're done animating and the scene window returns to normal the model returns to normal and then you can play the animation right away and that's what i call easy <laughs> and before we continue to unreal engine i just have to name the stunning built-in support for 2d games because oh my gosh is it amazing if you want to make a tile based game if you want to make a 2d platformer a 2.5d platformer with full ui support I mean, it's just incredibly easy to get started with it. And that's really a proof of how Unity is really viable for pretty much everyone. And when we were talking about the Asset Store, I was naming how we got all types of assets on the Asset Store. And this is one of the reasons, right? Because you have a incredible 2D game support and every designer, every game developer is going to be making any asset for the Asset Store regarding 2D games, which is going to result in filling the Asset Store with a lot of new content. And we have the almighty C Sharp for programming language in Unity. We also, I still, I think we still have the JavaScript, but it's still getting decaprecated, so a lot of plebs will be using that. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's very rude to say. I got started with JavaScript, so I'm as sad as you guys. But seriously, C Sharp is an incredible language that you can use for programming and it's also very easy to program in unity because you're getting into the api really quickly because they have not only amazing documentation but since unity is so popular there are so many tutorials that you can follow which are also my videos you know and the api and the library are very simple to get into in my opinion and i've seen that a lot of other people are thinking the same thing so i would generalize this comment and last but not least there also comes a price on unity and obviously there's a unity free version or the personal edition as they call it in unity 5 and higher up and the free version like they say that it's coming with limited features even though i don't like to call it limited features like you can just you can just not edit the splash screen and have the dark screen for all i know obviously there are some other features that i will link in the description down below but like i i don't call it really limited but you're basically there's a unity pro license too and that includes all the features and that goes on 125 dollars per month or $1,500 for one year 
per seat of Pro. And that was all for Unity. Now we're gonna talk a little bit about Unreal Engine first impressions. And I know that a lot of people are waiting for this part most likely because they wanna see how biased I am. And before we get started guys, I just wanna mention that I am normally biased to Unity because I've been using Unity so much longer than UV4 and I feel so much more safe using Unity because of that reason. But I won't allow my biased opinions to get forth of me because obviously this video is not supposed to be biased. And with that being said, let's get right into UV4. So first impressions, I was having a little bit of a difficult time to learn because the UI was not as simple as it was in Unity. And especially since like with the fact that I already knew how a game engine would work, basically depending on depending depending my knowledge onto Unity, I thought that it would be uh, it was a little bit more difficult in UE4 to actually get started with it. And that's primarily because I think that UE4 looks a lot more professional than Unity in terms of UI and layout. And I believe that Unity has this playful look which is newbie friendly or beginner friendly. Meanwhile, UE4 is a lot more professional looking and you have to know your shit before you get into it, I feel like. But alongside the difficulty, power also follows with him because when you enter the game engine, you just know that it's powerful and it's a great, great representative of next gen because not only does it look professional, but you get absolutely stunned when you actually see the graphics for the first time in UE4. Because when I saw it, like I got into it in my new scene and I just created a, or I placed down a bunch of 3D models and I was like, all right, so this is what I would achieve in Unity after spending like I don't know, like 20 minutes, which I did in two minutes in UE4. And that's because all these post-processing effects are by standard added to your scene. And they range from bloom to ambient occlusion to vignette and all these other effects. I still don't know if you call that a vignette or have a different pronunciation for that. <laughs> but if you, if I'm wrong with that, correct me. But vignette is the effect that is also added. Like it just looks stunning because when you, when you see that the engine really adds all these post-processing effects for you and still has an amazing optimization. It's just incredible because you obviously really get motivated to actually use the engine because you don't really have to put that much effort into it before getting it to look incredible. However, I was having less fun when level designing in UE4 for the first time because it was so difficult and I had to spend like an hour if not more to actually get started with a landscape material. And the difference in UE4 is that if you're gonna add a landscape texture or a texture to your landscape, you need to create an entire material based on these textures that you're gonna use, the normal maps and all these values that you edit by or adding by the material editor in UE4, which is a different part from Unity because in Unity it's like you got your 2D textures, go ahead and add it into your terrain settings. And even to this date, I have no idea how to use the material editor. <laughs> like, I know the basics because I have edited some materials for my, you know, materials for the game objects, but I have never ever been able to create a landscape material which feels so damn scary to me because I'm a programmer, I'm not a designer, I don't understand how blueprints work that way. I know it's not blueprint, but let's be honest, it looks like blueprints. Meanwhile, in Unity, it's like, oh, you got your 2D textures ready, let's go ahead and add it into your terrain settings. And if you have your 2D normal maps, they're even better. You can just add it into the same panel by really easily clicking on add texture. That's literally it. You don't have to create a new, brand new landscape material. You don't have to create anything else. You don't have to enter the material editor. You just go ahead and add your textures if you have them. However, I also thought that the grass adding was really simple because you literally just dragged and dropped your grass meshes into your slots and then you just started painting, which was a little bit scary from the beginning because I just thought that it was, they were 3D models, like they were just meshes. How were they going to be so well optimized? But you, really surprised me there well because they do optimize your grasses a lot when you're actually adding them. Another thing that really amazed me with UE4's level designing system apart from the fact that you have to create your landscape materials was the fact that you can actually edit everything for your vegetations on the run which means your initial sizes, the initial rotation for these vegetations, the fact that you can add multiple vegetation at the same time which in Unity you really can't do and these were amazing features because it really makes you it makes it a lot more easy for you to actually work in UE4 because you just, you know, place around all the grasses you've been thinking of and then you're done. Speaking of content, the marketplace or the asset store for UE4 is also filled with mostly expensive environment packs, but they all look gorgeous, so you got at least that going for yourself when you place them in your scene, but they're quite expensive for you if you're a beginner. And that, that's also related to the fact that UE4 is not as free engine as of Unity, like Unity can be used for 
pretty much anything that you want to create and it's also very very popular i'm not saying that ue4 is not popular but obviously unity is a lot more popular and therefore they unity has the resources and has the developers that are creating their own stuff and releasing it for the public as well which is an advantage for both unity and for their users but uv4 still has gorgeous packages as well and there are some cheap assets too depending on obviously the releaser or the publisher but since unity is filled with content anyone who uploads new content has a very big competition and therefore they try to lower the prices so that a lot of people can actually buy the packages and prefer them over the ones that are more expensive. Speaking of freedom of the engine, we also have a built-in blueprint system for non-programmers in UE4. So if you're a designer, you don't know how to code, you're pretty much welcoming UE4. In Unity, you would have to get a third-party asset that is not mainly supported by Unity developers or Unity Technologies as a group or the organization is called. Meanwhile, in UE4, it's like, yeah, you're not a coder, you're still welcome to use our engine for creating your games because it's it's supporting a built-in blueprint system, which means that you're pretty much coding by designing. And the way it works is basically that you have some modules and you have some nodes that you drag in between these modules and you say like a module, which is game start, and then you have another module saying player move and you drag a node between them. So it means after the game starts, player will move and it's a great advantage for those of you who don't really know how to code and you don't want to learn how to code but still want to make games because you're pretty much welcoming ue4 then and besides even if you're coding um blueprints are very very highly like ue4 depends highly on blueprints so the sooner you learn blueprints the more you're going to be able to create we talked about this a little bit earlier in the video when i was talking about the level designing part of ue4 but the full material editor support in UE4 is amazing if you're actually editing the materials for your game objects. Like they, they, it's very, very highly detailed. It looks like the blueprint system from my own knowledge. But it's, I mean, when you're creating a landscape material, it's not really that good, at least in my opinion. But if you're using it to create or like edit your materials for the game objects, it's perfect because you have a fully laid out system or window, a brand new window in front of you for actually editing and modifying the materials. And it's amazingly fast to work with the material editor from my first impressions, although when I was creating my own materials, it wasn't as fast. For example, like the landscape material that I was talking about, like creating a landscape material would not be a problem if the material editor was not so difficult to get into for me at least. Um, but if you're just modifying the materials that are already existent, you're pretty much going to have every kind of resource you're looking for. And I also want to say that we have C++ for programming language in UE4. Um, it's a great language, don't get me wrong, but it's very difficult to get started with if you're new to game development. Because some people, like, you're, you're going to hear a lot of mixed thoughts of this, and my my opinion my, is my opinion, right? You you probably, you may think that C++ is a piece of cake when I think that it's really difficult. But when you're new to programming, I would never ever suggest you to start with C++. Um, even if you're new to game development, like it doesn't really matter. If you're just new to programming in general, I don't suggest you C++ because it's the most detailed and the most developed and the most wide programming language out there. And why would you start with that if you have more easy options for yourself? But still, like if you learn C++, obviously you're going to be able to work on it. But I do I suggest you still to work on C++ as for your first language ever? No, definitely not. So now let's get into the fun part. Unreal Engine prices. Um, it's completely free for usage fit with full features um, compared to Unity, which comes with a free version or personal edition, which is limited for features. Um, in UE4, you get all the features for the free version, but you have to pay 5% of everything you earn from your project, including in-app purchases, ads, game prices, and whatever else kind of income you make from the game. And a lot of people have been arguing about if Unity is more free than UE4 if, or if vice versa. And I believe that both are not really that free because with UE4, you're forced to pay 5% of everything you earn from your project, which is not a big deal at all. Um, and in Unity, you come you come to free version with a little bit of limited features. And when you earn after like I think it was hundred thousand dollars from your first your income from the game, um, including in app purchases, game prices, and ads, and all that, um, you have to pay for the pro license or at least the plus version. And so it's pretty much ending at the same end. Um, even though people are arguing, you know, it's arguably that 
you know, Unity is a little bit more expensive than UE4, obviously, because you get Unity or Unreal Engine for free completely with all the features. But at the same time, Unity doesn't really differ that much from the features that comes within the Pro version. The Pro version is a lot more based upon people that are working in teams, I would say. Alrighty guys, so now before we end the video, we're going to talk a little bit about the conclusion part. And we're also going to give points to a certain engine for a certain topic. And first and foremost, we're going to talk about simplicity, which means which engine meets you the best if you're a beginner and which is the one you're going to have a best first impression with when you're creating a level design, coding, looking at the UI and getting met with the layout. I will give the point to Unity because I believe that Unity is a lot more easy than UE4 to get into if you're a beginner. And that's mainly because of the UI, mainly because of the workflow that's a lot more simple in Unity compared to UE4. And therefore, I'm giving a point to Unity, which makes the score 1-0. And now we're going to grant one of these game engines a point for graphics. And by graphics, I mean how professional it looks and how much of a true representative it's of next-gen graphics when you actually enter the game engine at first. And the point will obviously go to Unreal Engine engine for that matter because UE4 really has that tendency of giving you the amazing capabilities of having a great visual implementation of the engine when you're actually entering it for the first time. It just looks stunning as soon as you enter the game engine throughout the entire process and therefore we're granting UE4 a point which makes the score 1-1. And guys now we're going to get into a topic called assets where we're going to be granting a point to the game engine with the best asset store or marketplace for the content that you can download and purchase through the engine right away. And the point here will go to Unity for having the most content and the most cheapest content on the asset store compared to the Unreal Engine's marketplace. And this makes the score 2-1 to Unity, so Unity is in lead. And now we're going to talk about professionalism for these engines. Professionalism is how well you get met when you actually enter the game engine for the first time and how much you feel like it's a actual professional game engine which is next gen and you're really sure that that this is the game engine you want to use for graphics, for visual representation of your game, and for having a great experience when it comes to professionalism. And here we're going to have to grant UE4 one more point because of how professional it looks as soon as you enter the game engine, even though it might be a little bit more difficult to get into, it's the point. When it looks professional, it, when it looks a lot more advanced, it's meant to be a little bit more difficult. And therefore, the score is now 2-2 and they are at a draw. Now guys, we're going to continue with a topic called level design. This topic will range everything from post-processing effects to the actual main part of designing the level from the landscape system or the terrain system. And the point in this topic will go to Unreal Engine 4 because I've been having so much more easier time to work in level designing when it comes to UE4 rather than Unity because how it's more optimized because of how it's already added with standard post-processing effects and you don't really have to edit that much. In Unity, you pretty much have to buy some post-processing effects to make sure that your levels look amazing. Meanwhile, in UE4, it's like you got your post-processing effects by standard, go ahead and use them. You can still make an entire game out of them. And before we grant the point itself, we are obviously had to gonna talk about the fact that you can place grasses and other types of vegetation onto meshes. Meanwhile, in Unity, you can't really do that. And therefore, the score now becomes 2-3 and UE4 is in lead. And now, guys, we're gonna get into a topic called animations. And animations is going to cover up a huge chunk of the engines, which literally means how you create, play, and edit the animations. The point here is going to go to Unity because of how simple it is to create an animation file and start editing the animation for your read game objects or whatever 3D object or even 2D object you have in your scene by editing it through the scene window. And it records automatically. When you press the record button again, it saves the animation automatically and you're back to where you began in your scene window. And therefore, we're going to grant a point to Unity, making the score 3 3. And now we're going to talk about materials. And the materials topic, guys, is going to cover up mainly how easy it is to edit, add, and create materials into your scenes. And the point here will go to UE4 for its material editor, the incredible system that a lot of people are actually very, very satisfied with. I was very satisfied with it because I was just appreciating the fact that they have taken their time to create an entire material editor for you to use in the engine. And therefore, the score is going to now be 3-4 to Unreal Engine, which means that UE4 is leading once again. And now we're going to talk about 2D perspective of these engines. And yes, for those of you wondering, that was a unintended pun right there. 
<laughs> and guys, in 2D part, we're going to cover up how compatible each respective engine is with 2D systems. And obviously, the point will go to Unity for its beautiful, magnificent 2D system that Unity Technologies has created quite recently, making the score 4-4 and making it draw again. We're getting close to the end of this video, guys, and now I want to talk a little bit about programming. So first and foremost, I want to say that programming is going to contain which programming language is actually supported in each engine. Unity has C Sharp and UE4 has C++. Now, I just want to say that I won't be giving points to any of these engines. Personally, my first impression was that C Sharp is a lot better because it's more beginner friendly, but I will still not give a point to Unity because of the fact that this is a opinion based option, which is heavily based upon opinions. Speaking of programming, I also want to get into the opposite, which is non-programming friendliness and since this is not really a opinion based factor I'm gonna be able to give a point to UE4 because of how friendly it is to non-programmers because obviously when you're new to UE4 you're new to programming and you don't really feel like you're ready to learn coding yet you can get to use the blueprint system which is magnificent in unity you had the same option but it's not built in you had to purchase or download some type of third-party asset for that to actually matter. So now that the score has become 4-5 to UE4, which means that UE4 is leading, we're gonna get into one final point which means price. And price is mainly going to contain about my opinion regarding which engine I think is the most worth regarding the price. And in my opinion, Unity Pro does sound more viable than UE4 because Unity Pro at least comes with a free license until you start making some money from your game. Meanwhile, UE4 actually comes with a royalty that you have to pay 5% of your commission for whatever you earn from your game as soon as you release it. And therefore, I'm gonna give Unity one last point which makes the score 5 to 5, meaning that there is a draw. So in conclusion, guys, the programming language of your choice is the one that's going to matter the most, I feel like. Uh, for me, Unity wins the game because I grant Unity one point in my own mind for C Sharp. But if you're a C++ type of guy and you follow my video's routine or my video's structure, you're going to be able to go with UE4 more easily, I feel like. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching this long video. <laughs> I hope you all enjoyed your time being here. If it did, make sure to drop a like down below. It really supports me a lot. And also hit subscribe if you want to stay up to tune for new videos coming soon like this one, new comparison videos, tutorials, level designs, and more in both of these engines and more. And also leave a comment down below stating which one of these engines you're supporting the most and which one you feel like using the most. And with that being said, I'll catch you in the comments. See you guys. Peace out. Don't leave.